for the final internment we just want to join together as we sing this song we still have joy after all we've been through we still have joy let's all stand I still have joy
still have joy. After all we've been through, we still have joy. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We give God praise and thanks for his honor and for his glory. Today, one of the departments of our church, which Sister George have also been active in, is the Crusaders Department and the district director is here to pay a tribute. So we now ask the crusader to do their tribute. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are thankful to God for his goodness towards us. And we are happy for this opportunity, even though, you see, we are here to celebrate the life. We are celebrating the life. And we are thankful to God because this tremendous woman who would have done so much for all of us, let me say to you today, there are two families gathered here. The immediate family of Sister George and the extended family. The peoples, the members of the People's Pentecostal Church are the extended family of Sister Gertrude George. We would, before we do our opening prayer, we will ask that our Scripture reading, before you take your seat and we pray, remain standing with us as we read our first scripture today, taken from Psalm 27. We would invite Curly Douglas, who will do this. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. The scripture reading will be taken from Psalm chapter 27, reading from verse 1 to 6. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came up upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an horse should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now my head be lifted up above my enemies wronged about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing, Praises unto the Lord. This is the word of God. The Lord. Reverend Knowles McCall, our district bishop, would have loved to be here, but unfortunately he is out in Africa. And being there, his deputy, Reverend Wayne Quashi, is here representing Pawi Tobago District. Reverend McCall, as I still would have loved to be here to pray in this lot. So we invite the Deputy Bishop or the Assistant Bishop, Reverend Wayne Kwashi, who would now lead us in that opening prayer. Reverend Kwashi. Praise the Lord. Let's bow heads in prayer. Father, we give a thanks and we give a praise, O oh God, for today. 
We thank you, God, for this funeral service, this ongoing service. Dear God, for dear sisters, it's a good to judge. We bless your name, dear God, and we thank you, dear God, for what you have done. Lord, through our life, oh God, Jesus, and oh God, for the many lives, oh God, you would have touched, oh God, to allow us to be here, Lord, today. We pray, oh God, that as we go through, dear God, the service, we pray that your hands will be upon us. We pray, oh God, that you will strengthen and comfort, dear God, of families, oh God, Lord, of, oh God, be re O oh God, of Sister George, and also their God, a church family, and all, O oh God, who would have connected with God with her in some way or the other. So we are saying thank you, dear God, for today. And we are praying that today will be a blessed day for all of us. Oh God, we will all be encouraged, uh, Lord, through your word, oh God, and for the ministries, oh God, that we are going to receive, dear God. So at the end of it all, Lord, we are praying that our souls, oh God, will be challenged, will be encouraged, and God, those who do not know thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, they will commit their lives, oh God, unto you. Yeah, God, even as Sir George would have done. So we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. So be glorified in the service we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We enter now into special worship. And the legacy of Sister George is strong because her granddaughters are going to come to lead us in worship today. Let's put our hands together. This is a joyful place. Let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord.
power above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wealth and treasures of the earth. You were here before. 
sorrow, I smiled when I heard that song. Because it reminded me of Papa G. And the part about it that he loved is that he took the fall. Hallelujah. Let's give God a round of applause for taking the fall for us today. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. He took the fall. Hallelujah. Do you know that Papa G was an outstanding worship leader? Look at the legacy. Look at the legacy. Let's give God another round of praise. Yes, God, we bless your name. He took the fall. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Like a rose trampled on the ground. We give God praise. We give God praise. We give him praise. So we want to thank Stacy, Kishan, Kim, Odnella, and Shahida. Let's give them a round of applause. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Today is not no normal sad thing. We, we, are, we are celebrating the life of, of a great woman. There's something about, about Georgia. We're just standing there. And you know, many people didn't understand this side of her. There was a compassionate, compassionate side. You know, she was the founder. And you know, many times, when you have children growing up in church, you know, Pentecostal, we, we were so holy ghost and holy and on the way to glory. So any mistake come up in between, there's always a kind of thing. And herself, one, one, let, let me just say this. Papa G came to me one day and he said, Pastor Frank, he was always my counselor. And I always listened to him because I had awesome respect for him. And he came one day and he said to me, Pastor Frank, I tell you something. He said, he said you know, we Pentecostal, when uh, somebody do wrong, we, 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 we judge them so hard. He said, you know how many people we can't find because they made a mistake and we dealt, though our intention is for restoration, we deal so hard. He said, I want you to make an alteration in your discipline. That even though you discipline, create a system to tie the person you are disciplined that they would not go away. And I, I'm saying this to say this about Georgie. You know, she was one of the older members and have Joe Tom and Matthew and Lois and them running through the benches making all kind of mischief. And, and when they would have grown, you know, children take their own part. And she had, she had the challenges of her own. But there were many who were looking on and were saying, well, like, like Georgie, losing things. But she never abandon you even though you make a mistake. And this was a trait that sometimes people look at her as a compromiser. But then she said, Pastor, if, if, if we turn our back upon the wounded, then what? And I salute her today for her temperance in discipline. We give God praise and thanks for his goodness. Listen. We want to look at another scripture. It's taken from the book of Isaiah. And, and all these songs and these things that are reflected are telling the life of Georgie. You know? So, so Kishen is coming back to read this scripture. You could come right up here, wherever you were, you, 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 your, your grandparents and their beloved. Come right up here and read it from, 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 from right on top. Bless the Lord. The second reading is taken from Isaiah 54, verse 13 to 17. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. 
thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt fear, and from and from, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near me. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the, the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for, for his work, and have created the waster to destroy. No weapon formed, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue, every tongue, sorry, that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of, thy, of the servants of the Lord, and thy righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So don't get carried away because I call Sister George, Georgie. You see, in 1991, Sister George and Brother George adopted me and my family, or my family and I. And Brother George said that when I have any important function in my home, if you don't come, you, you have to pay me some money. He didn't tell me how much I have to pay him. But he told me if I didn't come, I wouldn't pay him. And I became part of the family, the extended family. And, and the name they give me was Frankie Paul. But, but you know, as I say, George, you don't think it's disrespect. There, there was that official thing, but there were also the, the, the synergy that, that developed between you, that, that you don't go through all the protocols. So then, I don't want you calling me that uh, out Frankie Paul, you know, that, that, that was in a particular setting. <laughs> but um, that, that, that name came to me <laughs> when they inducted me in the family, Frankie Paul. So don't get me wrong if I say Georgie, because that was it, you know? So it's no disrespect. It's a kind of relationship being expressed in these words. We, we want at this time to have some tributes, because the life of, of Sister George has been so um, immaculate in that she had been a founder of this church and by extension the district because it was out of the first congregation that all the churches grew in the different uh, areas of Tobago. And the, the fact of her functioning in all levels. I even believe she functioned in men's ministry too. You know? B because as she would say to me, if she had been woman, think if it's one man who used to be there, it's better George. And when he doing men's thing, she used to support him also. So, so she was part of, there was no area in the church that she was. Today, as I said before, Reverend Knowles McCall would have been delighted to be here. And uh, I know that it, it's burning him a little bit that he's in Africa right now. He could not be here. But his able assistant, Reverend Wayne Kwashi, the assistant district bishop, is going to come to give a tribute on the behalf of the Tobago district. Praise the Lord. Okay, I just want to acknowledge, you know, our bishop, Reverend Noel, um, Glenroy Frank, you know, the pastor of this church. I see on the pulpit also evangelist Jeremiah Prescott. So I acknowledge him being here this morning. And also I want to also acknowledge, you know, all the family members, right, all the siblings, you know, of the late, you know, Sister George. 
and also want to say good day to everyone. So I give God praise and thanks this morning for the privilege, you know, of being able, you know, to stand here, you know, representing my bishop, you know, Reverend Knowles McCall, who is not able, you know, to be here. He told me that he was trying to see if he could have get something to send, but unfortunately he did not get it. So then I have to do the representation. So on behalf of the PAWI Tobago District, we want to also join with you as you celebrate your know, wonderful life. All right, we know that Sister George, you know, would have lived her life. All right, I think that's how I call her, you know, Sister George. Okay, because I remember, her, you know, being, you know, a person who has been a person who is loving, kind, one who is generate, one who is generous, you know, in whatever you know she does. And I really want to thank God for knowing her, you know, personally. You know, coming to People's Medical Church, you know, and looking at her, realizing how much, you know, she really loved the Lord. And we can really, you know, look at her and see her love, her commitment, her dedication to the PAWI district. Because she was involved, you know, in WM, WM as we heard it last night, WMC, now it's changed from Women Ministry changed to women's ministries and she was also involved we know in Christian education in the Christian education department and also school ministries you know as a district so when we look at you know her commitment her dedication and her service and love for the Lord you know I believe that all of us here today you know we can also take you know a page you know from our sister's life, the commitment, you know, that she had for the work of God, that love that she had, that dedication that she had, all right, and the way in which she would have served, and she would have served, served for many, many years, you know, in this Tobago district, all right, and I believe that, you know, if um, Sister George would have been here this morning, one of the things, you know, that she would have said to all of us, that we need to serve God. Because no matter what, you know, she did, I realized that she kept her focus, you know, on God. You know, serving the Lord. And it's a reason why she was able also to bring up her children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And I want to say to all of us today, even as we reflect upon the life, you know, of Sister George, she was really a tremendous individual. And where the work of God was concerned, she dedicated her life, you know, to the service of Almighty God. And we just want to encourage you, all of us here today, those of you who have not yet received Jesus Christ as your Savior, I believe she will want to say to you today, hey, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. There's nothing better than serving Jesus. Live for Him, because that is what she gave her life for. She lived for Jesus. And I believe she will want to encourage all of us here today to also live for Jesus. So all the children, siblings, I'm encouraging you, you know, follow in your grandmother's, in your, in your mother's footstep, grandmother, whoever she was to you. Follow in that footstep and be, and really have a love for God, be committed, be dedicated, and really serve the Lord. Amen? Serve him with gladness. So whatever you are doing for the Lord, make sure that you serve him with gladness. Alright? So this is my word of encouragement to you. And on behalf of all, you know, the pastors, you know, credential workers and churches, you know, in this district, we want to extend our love and condolences to you. So be strong and continue to move on for the glory of God. Bless the Lord. Thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy towards us. We, I, I just want to take the opportunity to acknowledge Sister Devine. Uh, I acknowledge her today because she has been one of the women who have worked alongside in this church with Sister George during her time. They are hardly 
many women around who uh, can, can take that footsteps with her. Some of them have passed on and was not able to be here. But I want to have special acknowledgement to Sister Devine. Let's give her a round of applause. Sister Devine, could you just stand let us acknowledge her. Bless the Lord. She a very, very close good friend of Sister George. Bless the Lord. Bless God. Amen. We want to let you know that from, from the People's Pentecostal Church, um, we, we have uh, two individuals here. One, we have Reverend Jeremiah Prescott. He has been a former pastor here. He will be here shortly. But we will first call Sister Anita Nelson, who will come to give a tribute on the behalf of the church. Today, Sister Anita Nelson. Let's help her there with the mic. Good afternoon to all, and I am here on behalf of the People's Pentecostal Church, where, as you know, is the Reverend Dr. Glenroy Frank, who's the pastor here, and his wife Maria, and the people of the People's Pentecostal Church, to join in the celebration, the homegoing service of Sister George. When you think about Sister George, you know, you think about, as Pastor, what she would have said, the commitment, the commitment, the dedication, if it's two words will come out, there are much more, but that commitment that she had. When I see Gertrude Dodd, I think about, you know, I think about the beginning of the Philippian church and with Lydia, the role that Lydia played. And I see Sister George play that role in the Poway District and in the People's Pentecostal Church. As was said before, Sister George participated in all aspects, everything, all areas in this church. And I must say the men ministry be that when any time the men was wrong, rather than go to Papa G or go to Brother Charles, they always run to Mama. They run to Sister George because they know that she'll be able to comfort and counsel them right with a spirit of meekness. They expect that, so they go to her. And this is something I admire quite a lot about her. I know that she functioned quite a lot in the women ministry. And I remember when there was the 25th anniversary and she was in charge of this ministry for 25 years and more. And I'm saying, well, how could she make that? Because I would have burned out. I couldn't handle that. Because, I mean, you're dealing with people all the time, you know. And, but there was Sister George, that commitment, that dedication. And she wasn't there, she gave it a hundred percent. It's not that she was just because she makes sure the ladies did all their craft and things. She makes sure the exhibition, everything come off. She makes sure the people take care of the pastor, whosoever the pastor was. She makes sure all of that take place. The visitation of the shutting, she makes sure that everybody was visited. She took things for them, you know, this sort of thing. She was functioning. And she went, when I said 25 years, I said, you know, I sort of reflected and I said, you know, I remember the scripture in Hebrews come to me. It said, lay aside all the weight and the sin that easily beset you and run the race with patience. And I said, she's really running this race with patience. You know, and when even I look over in Colossians and I, I saw, you know, where it said, you know, he had the strength of the Lord in all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. 
This was Sister George. This was the sort of thing. And when you, two people in this assembly, when you look at their face, the faces, you know, you could actually see the joy of the Lord, which is Sister George, and guess who the next one is? Anybody guess who? Sister Nancy. The two people. Am I telling lies? Sister Nancy, when you watch their faces, I mean, you can't keep a straight face when you see these two people. They make you smile. And they always have an encouraging word to you. Because you actually, like you've seen the joy of the Lord radiating from them. This is what I experienced. I don't know if anybody else did. But the two people in this church, you know, as I look to them, you see that coming off. You see the love coming off. And they always have a good word for you. You know. And I look at that. And we come back to Sister George. And then when we come, the women ministry. And then we come to the Christian education time. And I remember when I came here, actually I was brought to this assembly by Sister George and Brother George. I was relocated and I came and they brought me to this church. And immediately... I realized she was teaching in Sunday school. The class was right there. And I just joined the class. And before I know it, she pulled me in, had me, my ministry started there. She had me teaching her class, dealing with the teens and the missionettes. So she got me involved. So I didn't have time to think, to escape. She got me involved. This is how she was. She got you involved. And any problem I was having, if even... I wanted something explained to me, right? Let's suppose the kingdom of God. And I say, but the kingdom of God in me? And they tell me, I see the kingdom and all this stuff. Sort of, she'll sit me down and teach me about it. She'll get the relevant literature, apart from taking it from the Bible, the relevant literature to show me so that, and make sure that I understand what the kingdom of God is all about. She really loved teaching. So that even though for this entire one, when you think about it, if she would have taught for the entire, her entire period, let me say 60 years plus, can you imagine how many people she was able to influence within that period? Because when you think about it, it's their children, their grandchildren, their, you know, and I mean, people from this church, they are spread all over the world, right? And I'm sure if you call them and ask them about Sister George, they started in Sunday school here, right? So she has done a lot, you know, as the matriarch of this assembly. She has done quite a lot, right? In teaching, whether when time comes to go to school ministry, she was available. She was always available. We'll never say no, right? Another area that she, she thinks, she was a grand chef. She could have cooked. And this is why many of the pastors, when they leave, you know, they are going to see George. It's the food they're going for. We know that. We know that. Well, God said that he tell the people it's the food they're following. So they come for the food. We know that. However, this was the sort of person she was. And everything, whether you were cooking for, whether you were cooking for the um, camp, whether you were cooking for a uh, family day, whether you were cooking for dinner, Georgie was in it, always in it. So much so to the point when, I mean, we could not have afforded, um, we could not have afforded um, using, when we have conference or anything, using hotel. So people used to stay in other people's home, all the delegates like that. She will cook her area, her house, she will do the cooking. And I remember when it had the conference, Went to Vega host the conference. There she was. Open up a house with tall James and all of them. Yeah. Going in, going for wood. Bringing wood to cook. I remember that. Right? So, and in spite of that, when you think about quarterly long time, what it was, it was something you, you shared. Georgie is coming with her basket. And, you know, like Tante Merle in the Oval, she come in with a basket and everybody could get to eat. This is what Sister George, the legacy, this is. She shared. 
which he gave she provided for others that was that that was the sort of person she was always willing to share always willing to give as a new person coming to live in the Canby area when when i look out brother and sister george at the front come to welcome me to the Canby district and of course they are coming with something they are bringing goods for you they invited our family many times to have lunch especially on Sunday and when you leave you have to make sure you leave with something to take home this was sister George always willing to share what she had always willing to counsel another area she was a praying woman you couldn't get away from that she was a praying woman anybody who passed her, she prayed for you she gave you a blessing she was always willing to give you a blessing she was a praying woman and any there was hardly a prayer meeting in the church that she was not available always available all the whether it was a crusade going on and we had to come to the church to pray she was here whether it was when the coup and he had to come here to pray she was there always praying and always praying for somebody always encouraging always want them to know about the word so that their faith will be loved this was the sort of person this was the sort of legacy we had right always available and when when i look at it i i was looking at isaac as you remember with isaac when isaac had to when was the famine and he decided he was going down to Egypt and the Lord said, don't go at all. Stay right here. I'll fulfill all my promises right here. And remember, it multiplied a hundredfold. But you know what I admire about that? What I admire about that, when God, in Genesis 26, what, what God told him, he said, all these things, all these blessings you will get, because of that Abraham, that's what he said, because of that Abraham, he observed my word, he did all my, follow my law, he did everything because of that Abraham. And I'm saying because of that sister George and that brother George, the blessings that the children, the grandchildren and the whole generation, even all of us, because we are part of the family, that we will receive. Is because of that sister George and that brother George. And I think it's a good note to close. I thank you. Bless the Lord. We give God praise. You know the, the generosity and, and giving of the George's family is, is so outstanding. I, I heard Sister Nelson makes some reference pastors going for food. But um, let me just say here, one of the things being Frankie Paul and close in, Brother George and Sister George say that every visitor that comes to the church must come to their house for lunch. He makes that a rule. That's a rule of Brother and Sister George. They must eat in our house. The thing about it is that they never came and said, you know, um, we ain't have, where you going to come from? And listen, sometimes I sit down and I, and I think about the, 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 the wealth of knowledge and, and the way how they taught you to entertain, to, to treat people. So by the time people begin to come to us in the construction of the school, I learn from them how to entertain visitors when they come in. Listen, the, the, the wealth of knowledge, I, I think that many will cry today about her departure, you know, but I want you to gaze on the wall and notice the legacy of, of examples, the policies that they have written in their expression. I want us to recognize that. And um, Reverend Jeremiah Prescott, who have been a pastor years ago, is going to come to give a tribute on the behalf of 
their family. Let, let's put our hands together for Reverend Jeremiah Prescott. Praise the Lord, everybody. And good afternoon. Good day, sorry. You know, <laughs> you have to be so careful with it. When it's evening and when it's morning and when it's noon. But glad to see so many of the, the Georges clan out. I don't even know half of them. <laughs> I'm amazed. Hallelujah. And last night I saw him. Amen. And Esther and the other sister. I know the elder ones. Well, I wasn't here when their father died. I spoke with him before he died. I went and looked for him and he was looking so good. And she was the one that was a bit shaky. And he left her behind. You know, it's amazing in this world. Amen. And uh, I wasn't here for his funeral. You know, the Georges have something on me. When I got saved, 1959 October, it was he, down in the old building, I knelt down there, and everything that pastor said that night, the scripture, went through this air and came out that air. Until I felt a hand did so and pull me. I'm tall. And when I look, it's this short fella. He wasn't married. <laughs> they call him Speed and Mascot. Amen. And all he did was pray. Didn't say a word. He just hooked me. And he prayed, and that was it. He prayed me into the kingdom of God that night. But well, was not his, uh, his, out, his going home. But then again now, my wife called me. I think his sister Johnson said, you know, Sister George there. I said, what? No man, she wasn't looking. The last time I saw her went there, she was robust as ever. She is a fighter, but I didn't know she was that old. <laughs> 93. She bat well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You, amen. When you live that old, you don't cry. They, they bat well. When you make a hundred, you shout. <laughs> yes. So, I was in Tobago here for a few days. Went back to that. On Saturday, I had to preach yesterday. And I was wondering, I said, my God. My wife said, hey, you have to go to the funeral. <laughs> I was wondering how, because I leave on Wednesday morning at uh, 12.30 for New York. I'm always shifty. Eh? When you see me here, I come from somewhere. Amen. So, I caught the plane last yesterday evening, preaching Cuba, come back up, pick up a few things and run to Tobago just to be here. She was something else, you know. She was WMC president for so many years. Amen. And something just come to my mind. She made a good coconut sweet bread. You know, I eat sweet bread. I'm the only one in the house that really eats sweet bread. Amen. And she was good at it. But one thing I want to tell you. She remained like a pillar. See that? She never shifted sideways. She never turned around and stepped back. It was only one thing she knew going forward. She loved the Lord. She lived a wonderful life. 
Hallelujah. I wasn't at the wedding. I was at Bible school. I missed a good important thing. And one thing with him, he loved the ice cream. White ball. <laughs> Bring out the white ball. Amen. So he went, she stayed, and she stayed a little while long. And she did a wonderful job. Hearing the children, grandchildren. I didn't know they had so many grandchildren and great-grandchildren. That's a clan. My Lord. Hallelujah. And one of Sister George's daughter married to my cousin. Uh-huh. Where, where is she? No, ma'am. A big daughter. Look at her. Yeah. She went and married to my cousin. So she's in the press court. <laughs> Amen. But it's wonderful to see so many of you. The older folks are going. Amen. They're leaving. Many of them have died. Charles, all of them, they've gone. Hallelujah. But I'm still here. Still standing. I come from way, way, way back. Down in the little shack down there. 1959. And I had the privilege of celebrating my 86th birthday. 27th of August in Nairobi, Kenya. I had a wonderful time. And I had to preach the Sunday morning. And it was wonderful. So I'm still there. I'm no spring chicken. I'm a late, late winter chicken. <laughs> Amen. But God bless you. I bring, listen, I bring condolences from my daughter. Quite in Jersey. She called me and said, Daddy, you hear Sister George gone? I said, yes, I just pick it up. And the chances are, if you're online, she's going to be looking at it. Yeah? My children abroad, hallelujah, they all know her. Amen. So she left a legacy behind. What is the legacy you leaving behind? Money? Man, that's nothing, man. Things are not legacy. It's a life that you live that have influenced people. Amen. Forget about owning this and owning that and the other. You leave them and before you die, they're watching you. And soon as you say zip, they're crying in this eye and laughing in the other eye. All is mine. Come on. I've been practical. And I love the atmosphere. Nobody crying here. Everybody rejoicing. Why? Because you were saved. And I leave the scripture with you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I go to prepare a place for you. So don't worry, she has a place. And when I come again, I'll receive you unto myself. Hallelujah. Let's shout hallelujah, man. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. You aren't doing it right, man. What when a goal score? You ever see you, you, you watch Premier League and those leagues? And when they score, they say, Go, 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 go. Come on, stand up and give God praise, man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, wake up the whole neighborhood, man. Hallelujah. Glory. Bless she God. has gone to be with Jesus. Bless the Lord. We give God praise and thanks. You may be seated. Now, now today, um, we, we, we have maybe about, about three more tributes to come. But what, what, what I want to say here is that the, the, the life of Sister George was so an, an enormous life. I said it almost because to, to tell how far she plant her feet. And when, when you thought Sister George was done after serving women and the church for so many years, and Christian education, she couldn't do it anymore. Sister George decided that she's going into the schools. 
she go into the schools and do school ministry. And she'd have done that for many, many years. I want you to prepare yourself because um, it, it is not always because of the, the, when I say prepare yourself, because we are in church celebrating the life of George, the greatest giver and generosity person that I know is Sister George. And the last area she worked is in the school. And she would have sacrificed a lot of resources with the congregation, self and Brother George. When I came here as pastor, Brother George was over at Pentecostal Light and Life every day planting, planting this, planting that, planting some mango here, planting some things there. I want us that we take an offering today on the behalf of the George's family as Sister George's last offering she can give into the school. And um, I'm, I'm saying that, I'm saying in preparation for that, we would call um, the representative that will come and make a tribute on the behalf of the school ministries and religious instruction. So let us put our hands together. She's the person representing from the district. We, we fondly call her Sister Walkie, Reverend Walkie. We want to in, in, introduce. Let's put our hands together as we welcome her today as she speaks concerning uh, a tribute on the behalf of Sister George, after which we will invite the family, the grandchildren again. We are going to sing two congregational songs. We will ask Reverend Vernon Arthur, we want to, Bishop, we welcome you here in our service today. And I think that as you are here and have worked in the district before, we will give you the opportunity. You mentioned that you might have been here. We see you here. So prepare yourself to give a tribute on the behalf of Sister George. So after we have finished the two congregational songs, uh, after Sister Walkie, as I normally call her, Reverend, that she will then give the tribute. We want to take that offering while the songs are being sung. Brethren, it is a wonderful privilege to be part today of the celebration of the life of Elder Gertrude George. We give God praise and thanks for his goodness today. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to honor the evangelist Prescott, the bishop of this house, Reverend Frank, my pastor and the assistant bishop of Calvary Road Deliverance Temple, Tabernacle, Pastor Kwashi, and my good friend, we were in the executive together, the Bishop Arthur, and all this wonderful congregation, I say good morning to you all. Hallelujah. I want to give God praise and thanks for knowing this great woman. I know Sister George from a child, so at the time I knew her, she was Cousin Gertrude Charles. So it was Cousin Gertrude and Cousin Lucille, and I know Gloria Charles, and um, what's the other one name? Your sister, Beulah Charles. So the, the, the George's side, after she was married and become George, not familiar much with you all, but I remember this lady in the front. So many of you might not know that we were cousins, as we call it, grandmother, cousin Joanna, right? So I know her from small. And then growing up now, um, when I become Christian and knowing this woman, getting to know her closer now, um, she's Sister George. And she was my good friend because I was a little kind of, um, I would quarrel about some things. And Sister George, you didn't see this in WM. And I didn't know that she would um, correct me 
with a stern, it was Sister Waukee. But as she do that, it was with a smile and a hug. And I was saying it's because that we were relatives, she was showing me more love than the other ladies, even when we went to um, Guyana. But didn't know, hearing everything today, realized this was Sister George. She smiled for everything, whether she was disturbed, vexed, didn't, whatever. She always smiled. And hearing about her in the church, WM ladies, and then she was the great Sunday school teacher, and that wasn't enough for her, and she moved now to school. She had to capture the children in the school. All of you all, all of us, our children, it wasn't enough for the church. She went to the school, and she gathered other sisters, like um, Sister Mary George, walk along with her at Scarborough Sec. I knew her in school ministries um, with Cynthia Forbes, Reverend Cynthia Forbes, at the Bonacord School. I'm still there at Bonacord School. And she was always busy because she had something else to go and do. She was never, um, because of her age, she got older and, okay, I'm going to rest there. School ministry, she took up her bag and she got to go somewhere else. So she was at Scarborough Sec, and I knew her at Bonacord. I'm standing here today um, representing Cynthia, um, Cynthia Forbes, Reverend Cynthia Forbes, who is now the school RI for Pawi Tobago. She was unable to make it this morning, so she asked me to fill in for her. Sister George did a great job. And she encouraged people like me when I went to school ministry. She said, hold on. Don't give up because the children need us. And I'm asking that more people, all of us Christian and our children are going haywire. We need to get a hold of the children. We could get some in the church, but in the schools, it's ridiculous. It's disrespectful. They don't care about man or beast. But we, when we get there as adults, as, as Christian, and we get a hold of those children, listen to them. They have needs. They want to talk. Sometimes they can't talk to the parents. The teachers might not listen to them. But as all right, miss, miss, they have a problem and they will talk. They would ask, pray for me. Last week I was at Bonacord School. I finished my class and other children in other classes. Miss, pray for me. Miss, pray for me. And these children would meet you anywhere, in the supermarkets, on the street, wherever. And they would remember you. They will not disrespect you as an R.I. teacher. They remember that you came to the school and teach them the word of God. I want to encourage other people here today. Let's get into the schools because sometimes the children not coming to church, we can't get them anywhere else. We can get them right in the school because they have to go to school. So we'll get them in the school. I want to encourage us. I know Sister Erla, Minister Erla, she's a teacher and she would do a great job at her school. But what about others? Let's get into the school and grab the children because there is where the, all kind of laws coming out for our children. We have to get hold of them. They're not coming to church. Let's go to the school and take back our children for Jesus. God bless you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So we are going to um, we are going to call the grandchildren of the Georges. Let's give them a round of applause again. They are going to come do some congregational singing for us after we have Bishop Vernon Arthur, and then we have a family tribute, and so we go for the glory of God. The Lord bless you real good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Love the Lord and let your toys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. We are marching 
Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That is why Paul said, you may have your seats. That's why the Apostle Paul says that, yes, we can sorrow, but we must not sorrow as those that have no hope. Listen, hold the fort for I am coming. Who said, who signaled? Who gave the signal? Jesus, the one who came and gave his life for us. We give God praise and thanks today. We want to invite Bishop Dr. Vernon Arthur to give a tribute today. Let's put our hands together as we welcome him in the house. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Glenroy Frank. Good to see my good friend, Dr. Prescott. Amen. Nice having you also, the Assistant District Bishop, Reverend Wayne Cushing. And I see some assembly men around. Former assembly man, Joel Jack, I think I saw a few of them in the back there. Let me greet you today. And, and the entire family of Sister Gertrude George, a wonderful woman, an excellent woman, an outstanding woman. As you heard, I think it's Anita who used the word, she's the matriarch of the Pentecostal family in Tobago. Amen. And the foundation that many of us as pastors are standing on is a foundation that she and her husband assisted in building so we can have a Pentecostal movement in Tobago. Amen. And I really salute her for that tremendous achievement. When the days when we were called small faith and, and all kind of castigations, you know, things were hurled at us. Sister George and her husband and the Charles and these guys, they stood firm to make sure that Pentecostal movement in Tobago made its mark on the landscape of the spiritual development of Tobago. And I really want to, I think we should celebrate that. Amen. I, you know, I got a call, I don't know if it's Friday, someday one of these daughters called me and asked me if I heard that mommy died and so on and Coincidentally, I had to be in Tobago today. So I said, she told me today the funeral. I said, when? What time? 11. So that's a good time for me. Amen. I told them I'll be at the wake. I'll check you all out and so on. Because when, when people like that die, you can't overlook it. Amen. I don't know where I would have been if she did not assist in laying a foundation as a young man. You know, I got saved as a young man. In, in 1980. I don't know where I would have been if there wasn't a Pentecostal movement in Tobago. And I really want to thank God for the tremendous work that she has done. I want to encourage her children. Amen. To serve God. You have a very excellent example in her and her husband. Slave for God. Amen. And allow that legacy that she has started to continue through your life. So on behalf of my wife and I, and the Bethel World Outreach Ministry, we want to express our condolences to you and rejoice. She's in a better place. Yes, indeed. We have a tribute. This tribute is a family tribute. And uh, we would arrange that we have a mic because the individual is visually impaired. So we want to take the mic to her. And uh, the, we have one tribute before Linda. We, 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 have, we have one tribute before, one more tribute. So you can sit and, yeah. Bless the Lord. So, have some patience with us. We want to make it as comfortable. Uh, our cousin here is a little visually impaired, so she want to um, probably she can stay where she is, or she wanna. You can stay there. 
pleasant yeah. good afternoon oh, yes, to everyone. Yeah, <clears throat> we pass this way but once. So when whatever good we can do, let us do it whilst we pass this way. Such is was the life of the woman we honor today, Gertrude, Tante Charlo, Auntie Charlo, George. Auntie Charlo, or Tante Charlo, as we would have called her, came to live at John Lyon with among the Collett's family due to her marriage to her uncle, Vernon George. She would have lived among us for about over 50 years. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, within those times, I do not think that one day our mother and Auntie Charlo ever had any quarrel. Maybe the reason why is because she recognized that our Uncle Vernon loved his sister dearly. And he would have said he wanted no one to trespass against his sister or else. I don't know what that also or else meant. Auntie Charlo, or Tante Gertrude, as some would have called her, was a very, very hard working, dedicated, dutiful wife, caring mother, very good friend, considerate and understanding, empathetic whenever she had to be, a woman of substance. Therefore, we lived in harmony, and I pray Almighty God, I know that it would be the wishes of our parents that we continue this young generation, some of whom may not know us, but that we would continue to live together, adopt and continue the principles of what was taught to us. Tante Gertrude was a woman who was so dutiful Sometimes I wondered, how did she make it? Had to go to work, come home, look after her children, and in a twinkling of an eye, was dressed for church because our uncle, that busy man, was already in his car. You either hop on the wheel, but get you got to get there. And so she knew what she had to do. And she did it pleasantly and willingly. Therefore, I pray, Almighty God, that her soul will continue to rest in peace. And as I would have said, children, family, let us continue the legacy that was left behind by our parents. May God bless us all as we continue to celebrate the life of this notable woman, Gertrude, Tante Charlo, Charles, George. Blessing. Ah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. church. Let me recognize the elders of the church, led by Pastor Frank. My name is Louis Charles. I'm one of the elder nephew of Tante Gertrude, or Tante Gertz as we call her at, at home. I got a call from my brother close to midnight. I was called. 
that would be very strange. So I called him back almost immediately, thinking that something was wrong with my mother. I called him back and he gave me the news that everything's okay with mother, at we stand the future has passed. But of course, that was conflicting for me. Because on one part is good news, the other part is very bad news. Tandy Gertrude, known as a mother, grandmother, great grand, auntie, because she has cradled so many in her arms. To us, the nephews, the niece, the cousins, she was a woman of good, great virtue, substance, solid character. She didn't have the mantra, do as I say and not as I do. Her mantra was, in my mind, was do as I say and I do. Because she was such an exemplar to everybody around her. She was a proud lady. She loved to look good when she dressed. As a matter of fact, uh, my mother was her seamstress for years, Miss Audrey Charles. Sorry she couldn't be here today, but she had a clinic appointment that she made months ago. So if you missed that one, so she apologized for her absence here today. Tandy Gertrude, Tandy Gertrude was dedicated to her God, church, and her family. And, and she lived that way. She was also a great lady of influence. You know that she was a great cook. Nobody mentioned that for years she was uh, in the hospital working as a nurse, an assistant or a nurse. That influence was so great that we have one of our daughters becoming a great chef and cook in Trinidad too. And we have two of them becoming nurses or nursing assistants. So such was her influence on her family. She was very kind. She and Brother Joe was very kind. Kindness almost to a fault. Because they invited their homes persons who were not so um, good at the time and helped them while they built themselves. She was a stalwart in the church that I know because she lived here. She lived there. So instrumental in building the Light and Life School along with her husband, Brother George, or Brother G as he's called. And I do hope if it's not done already, Pastor Frank, that some hall or some room is dedicated to these two folks. Uh, when history is written, persons who are coming through the schools will know that they labored to play on this school. I really hope that that's done. She was supportive to her husband, and I remember that as a little boy when they were moving from John Dial to come to live in Candy. And Brother George house is not there right now. It has been expanded by the children. But he and Dante Gertrude and the bigger ones built every block of that house. Every block of that house. Coming down on evenings and on Saturdays to build it block by block. And she was there by side, side by side. She was a lady of quiet resolve, never loud, but strong and firm. When my mother passed, she supported my mother in more ways than one. And one of the things that they would do was at carnival time, they would go to Trinidad. Now, I found that to be kind of strange, so you know, I, I sort of got involved there. So, Tandy Goods, why are you taking my mother to Trinidad around carnival time? Um, you're going to play mass or what? Tandy Goods, in her own silent way, said, don't get involved in me and all your business. But you'll be told, they were going to try to support Sherry with her business down there, and that, that was going on until, until um, she couldn't do it anymore. <clears throat> so, for Tandy Gertrude to Esther, Beulah, Gloria, Lois, Jotam, Sherry, Preston, accept our condolences from the Charles from my side, and let's not cry around this time. Let's celebrate her life. Because if I could tie up her in a phrase for as long as she could, she did the most as she could, as best as she could. May she rest in peace. Good afternoon. Let me start.
start by saying why I'm here, to pay tribute and to thank, to, and to thank you. A caregiver is a person who focuses on providing care, support to those in need, whether as a family member or as a certified nurse aide, working with a medical team in a skillful nursing facility. A caretaker focus on maintenance, upkeeping, daily tasks, daily tasks, and focusing on daily tasks. Crystal George, you don't need a title. Okay, you don't need a title. Let me say it again. Crystal George, you don't need a title. You were that and more to Granny. I believe that deserves a round of applause because Crystal, you were more than a caretaker and you were more than a caretaker, okay? Just know that as I continue. The way you sacrifice your day and night for granny, it's, a, it's just amazing. Your sacrifice don't go unnoticed, okay? It's a blessing. I know for sure the way that you cooked your meals every time for granny was a joy to her. She enjoyed every one of them. She smiled as you took a plate to her and offered it to her every time I was home on vacation. She enjoyed that macaroni and cheese, even that macaroni and salad. Continue. You are blessed. She sure did love cooking. Crystal, the way that you even prepared Granny every single day, the way you gave her her bath, the way you keep her neat and tidy, does not go unnoticed. Crystal, we stand here just to thank you and just give you all of your blessings, all of your glory. It belongs to God. But Crystal, you deserve everything that's coming to you and more. We all do, but at the end of the day, I will say, God is not finished with you yet. Just remember to keep your head up high, walk in the confidence that you know that you have, and continue to lead by example. Know that Granny loves each and every one of us in this room today. Granny is truly proud of everyone, and for that I say thank you, thank you. You rock, Crystal. Continue to show us greatness. Bless the Lord. In case, in case you did not notice, that tribute wasn't really for Sister George. I trust that you understood why it is so important. Crystal, could you stand up a little bit? say all kinds of things about young people, but I, I have been able to observe Crystal over the years. I can say that she is my friend. She is the one who brought out the name Frankie Paul in a way, but she is a tremendous woman. I have seen replicated in her the patience and the ability of her grandmother to care. Because, you know, she just stuck to Georgie and say, if nobody else is going to be here to see after, and she ain't, she ain't say, Granny, you know, Mommy. I, I don't know, Esther don't feel a little way, but she always calling Granny Mommy. And for some reason, I've seen demonstrated in her. And while it is, we give all tribute to the gone, the one who is gone. Crystal, we salute you. For your labor of love and care. And next time when you see a short member of the family come up, don't laugh. Georgie has been a grandfather. We want to welcome at this time 
Sister Linda Williams, who will come to sing a very special Praise song. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. God is good. God is good. And all the time, God is good. This afternoon, I want to thank God for his goodness. You know, Sister George, she was like a mother to me. Sometimes when I go down, I'll go by Lois. We go, we go, we buy fish. We would make some tasty fish broth. And every year, I'll get a call from Esther. Hi, baby girl, you know what time it is. So when she says that to me, I know it's mom's birthday and I know what is required of me. So I will go down every year and I have to do special singing for Sister George. The one that we did in May, it was really nice. And it, was, it is just sad to know that this happened, but God is good, yes? So this special song is one of the songs that Sister George likes. He'll do it again. So be blessed in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He'll do it again. You may be down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through but right now it seems like there's no way out and you're going under but God's proven time and time again he'll take care of you and he'll do it again. Oh, yes, he'll do it again. If you will just take one look at where you are now and where you've been. Who oh, hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same God now as then. Yes, he does. Yes, he knows just how your heart has been broken in two. But you know what? He's the God of the sun and of the stars and of the seas. And he is your father. If he can calm the storms, he'll find a way and he'll fix you and oh he'll do it again oh yes he'll do it God will do it again if you just take one look at where you are now and where you've been oh 
You may not know when Jotam and Matthew and Sherry, but this thing we know, God is going to do it again. Right now, I'm going to call Sister George's children as you all join me on stage as we sing this song, this worship chorus that Sister George always loved. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. I'll be true, Lord Jesus. I'll be true. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord 
Jesus. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. Do you know if, if somebody sing that every day they wake up? It's, it's a prayer to God. It's a request. It's a request that is being made. And there are some practices that I remember speaking to Matthew. Because I know Matthew has been Sister George's eyeball. <laughs> and uh, right now he is, he is really feeling the effect of a God. But he said, Pastor, you know what holding me? Is that song she used to sing. Keep me true. Keep me true. And I'm thankful to God that it could have been echoed today. But without any further delay, the, the eulogizing of Sister Go to George will be taking place at this time. We will both ask Sister Gloria Sylvester and also Crystal George who will come and to read the eulogy. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, church, and thank you for being in attendance. Capturing the essence of the 93 years of love, commitment, and faith is a daunting task. Still today, we embark on a journey to celebrate the extraordinary life of Gertrude Audrey Charles George. She was affectionately known as Auntie Gertie, Charlo, and Sister George by many, but to my siblings and I, she was Mommy. Mommy's journey through this world was characterized by love, faith, and devoted service. She was born on May 6, 1930, to David and Joanna Charles, and spent her formative years in Point Fourteen, Trinidad. There she attended the Point Fourteen Anglican Primary School, excelling not only academically, but also as a school monitor, or as we call them today, an assistant teacher. Upon moving to Tobago, she embarked on a dedicated and committed career in the nursing profession, serving as a nurse's aide, now known as a nursing assistant. She faithfully served in this role for an impressive 33 years. In 1957, she made one of the most significant decisions of her life when she accepted the Lord as her personal savior. This decision led her to become one of the foundational members of Pentecostalism in Tobago, paving the way for the advancement of Pawi in the island. Throughout her life, she remained a steadfast member of the Glad Tidings Pentecostal Church, now known as the People's Pentecostal Church. Her faith was her guiding light in all her life, and she actively participated in all aspects of church life. Her position, her passion, was particularly evident in women's ministries of the local church and the district. She served in the capacity of president of the ministry for several years as the People's Pentecostal Church and held the position of assistant director and director 
at the district level until 2006. She also served as a dedicated religious instruction tutor for Pawi at the Scarborough Secondary School. While, she, while her church ministry was vital, Mommy's love and devotion extended beyond the church. In 1962, she married the love of her life, the late great Pentecostal pioneer, Vernon Papa G. George. There, together, they raised Beulah, Gloria, Miriam, Lois, Esther, Jotam, Avis, and Preston. Over the years, she was all, also became a loving mother to, all, to many others. As her children, we found, we found ourselves immersed in her deep involvement in church, following her and Papa G wherever they went, as there was no other option. My siblings fondly remember Mommy's daily ritual of beginning her prayers with the words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Her favorite Bible passages were Isaiah 54, 17, and Psalms 27, 1. They were a source of inspiration for her, as were her special hymns, Great is Thy Faithfulness, and I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus? We also recall her humming the chorus, Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true, every morning, as she prepared for work and got us ready for school. Mommy was not only a woman of <coughs> sorry. Mommy was not only a woman of faith, but also a culinary master in her own right. Her grandchildren still fondly remember about the famous bread and sauce every Wednesday. famous bread and sauce every Wednesday and her tasty black cake during the Christmas time along with her rich sorrel and ginger beer. Mommy's hospitality knew no bonds. In her prime, any visiting pastor of our church was always treated to a mouth-watering buffet lunch at the George's residence. She devoted home she was a devoted homemaker that <coughs> sorry she was a devoted homemaker mommy would bake every wednesday and saturday and i can assure you that every sunday morning she would carry a freshly baked bread and some sweet treats for the pastor at the time this act of love and generosity was a testament to her unwavering commitment to serving her church community, demonstrating her care and dedication to all that she, all that she did. Mommy's role extended to gra Granny's daycare when, she, when her professional duties of the hospital came to an end. Growing up in Daniel Trace, Canby, with my grandparents, along with my brother, Keyshawn, and six other cousins, Kim, Kimberly, Keon, Onella, and late Isaiah. <laughs> and although they didn't live with us, our other cousins, that would come every day, weekends, and on holidays, Stacy, Stefan, Shahida, Javon, and Janine. We were indeed blessed to have a great role model to grow up with. <laughs> And that was indeed the greatest thing that could have ever happened to us. We not only learn about love for life and family, but we learn how to read the Bible, we learn to be patient and, we, and kind, and the list goes on and on. You see, when it was camp time, oh my God, Mabi would make sure eight of us 
had what we needed from cups to plates to sheets to snacks. And here now, she'll sit and write our names on each and every one of those items because she didn't want it to get lost because she was chief cook and butter wash on the campsite. Daily vacation Bible school, <coughs> DVBS. Mommy made sure to pay our spot, made, made sure to pay for our spots early. So Papa would have dropped us and came and we came back home with Sister Norma. Usually it started around nine daily and finished by midday. And after that, we'll come home. And instead of my grandmother going to her bed to rest, she will make sure that we had food to eat while we played outside. Don't talk about trips, so we always traveled together. They made sure none of us got left behind. <clears throat> With the Caribbean trips, though it was fun, these trips wasn't regular trips. It was missionary trips. So it was no getting away from learning about God. You see, on weekends, we were up by eight. Eight of us, along with mommy and papa. And if you guessed it right, you will know that it was devotion. And though play, you're not turning when they're coming. Uh, papa will always have a rag religiously over his shoulder. And if he ain't get up, blows in your clothes, blows in your clothes, blows in your clothes. It was from that that these simple devotions well, not only that we learned about God, but we learned how to read and read confidently. Sunday morning, Mommy would get up at 6 a.m. to start a pot before going to church. And Papa used to tell her, Gertrude, when you get up, make sure them children get up with you and help you. But being the understanding grandmother we had, she never used the butters to get up. However, whoever wake up, wake up. I was afraid of it, so I getting up early, along with Kim and Keyshawn. Onella and Kimberly love bed, so them wasn't getting up at all. <clears throat> but for one thing, when that low locks van that my grand grandfather had, bouncy start at 9.30, who wasn't there was getting left. <clears throat> up to this day, we don't know how eight of us, plus mommy and papa, fit in the low locks. I wish I knew. So, mommy would take us, she would take us, bring us to church and send us um, toward respective Sunday school because she would have to teach us. And that woman used to dress with a big broad rim hat and nice nice dan dandy. You could have dressed like my granny? You're mad. Growing up, I was... Oh, I wasn't always, growing up, I was always deemed the wild one. Lacked responsibility. Not a rude child, eh? There was no control in me. As I'd be outside in the yard, kicking ball, playing cricket, running bare feet in the streets. And my grandmother used to say, like stick, breaking your ears, Crystal. There was no taming me. Saying that to say, growing up to be this responsible, I only em emulated it from from that lady in the box right here. <clears throat> Fast forward to 2013. I returned from college. By this time, both mommy and papa were getting down in age. I wasn't, an, I wasn't employed yet, so I did what any other grandchild would have done, start caring for them. So here I was making breakfast, lunch, dinner. Mind you, I didn't get this cooking thing done for the first two years of my 10 years caring for them. So I will endlessly call Auntie Sherry to help me. When, and when she get fed up at me, I call Auntie Grace. and say, bring a meal for me now. Bring a meal for me to give them. <laughs> but one thing was for certain. My grandparents was always grateful for whatever I cook, even if it burnt. They, was, they will always say, thank you, thank you. Caring for both of them became overwhelming. I was stressing because here I am degree in my hand and work wasn't coming. I never got a job until late 2014. So Auntie Sherry decided to take them to Trinidad so she'll care for them. Over time, they wanted to come home as they got fed up of Sherry. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But you know old people, they just wanted to come back in their space, their home, their environment, to be comfortable. 
by this time, I'm working a full-time job. So I had to go out and get a higher um, caregiver. So while at work, I'll have someone there with her. 2015 was the start of what shall I say? God really tested to see how strong our faith was as a family. Mommy got her first stroke. It wasn't that severe, but thank God she wasn't hospitalized. The year is 2016. We lost our beloved Isaiah. And that was one of mommy's favorite. So that hit her really, really, really hard. Later that year, mommy gave all of us a big scare. She got a second stroke. And that was the one that took all our breath out. She was hospitalized. It was bad. But one thing she did, taught us, was to pray. And that's exactly what we did. We prayed, we prayed, and we prayed more for her recovery. So that God would give her longer life on earth. That same year I had Catalia. So here I am taking care of a newborn and my, and my two other children, Mommy and Papa. Bearing in mind, I am no nurse. I have no knowledge of anything medical-wise. However, by this time, Auntie Lois returned home from London and joined me in helping to take care of Mommy and Papa. So from that day, we shared responsibilities of every other weekend and, and during the week, the caregiver was there. Papa had a mini stroke after Mommy. But, it was, but, but, but his, his will to survive wasn't as strong as mommy. So the Lord called him home in 2018. Still fighting to make sure she lived her life, she suffered another stroke. But she was determined to live. She was determined to live. So after therapy, lots of care, lots of care and love, she recovered nicely. Mommy will drink lots of water during the day, which will cause her to get up about 15 times in the night. And I have to get up with her 15 times as well to cover her back. So you would imagine I'll be tired the next day because of the inter interrupted sleep. At one time I used to play, I wasn't hearing her. Because, come and cover me now. I ain't hearing shit because I'm tired. She will cover herself, so she'll slowly crawl back into her bed and canter, canter in the sheet and cover herself. <clears throat> but you see, when day fall, she'll crawl out of her bed with her phone in her hand, and by that time, she could hardly manage herself. So she'll hold on until she reaches to her special spot on the couch, not leaving her phone behind. Then she'll have her breakfast, watch TBN, and then you'll hear snoring. Where it coming from is mommy. <clears throat> Just like that, she knock out. So I'm left to do the work. So I would hit the pans, hit the pans, and sing lustily. But she, could never, she was never waking up. <clears throat> On September 13th, just a month ago, I sat in the front of a screen facing a lady dressed in black and white and a man I thought I knew. But, I didn't, but it turned out I didn't know him. And then came October 13th, when I got a call from Auntie Lois, about 10, 20, 20, 25 p.m., telling me to come up by Mammy. Without hesitation, Catalina and I made our way by Mammy's place. Auntie Lois said to me, check Mammy, check Mammy, check Mammy, check Mammy. I proceeded to get closer to her. I then put my hands around her belly Passed my hands by her nose, checked her heart, but she wasn't breathing. Lois in the background. Krista, check again. Check again. I said, Lois, she is gone. She is gone. Flanked between Lois and Catalea. Auntie Lois, it is well, mommy. Go rest up. Catalea is saying to me, so granny gone to reunite with your husband in heaven? I wouldn't have believed that this day would have come. First call to Esther, no answer. Second call to Auntie Sherry. After five rings, she finally picked up with a sleepy voice. I said, your mother is gone. She was like, gone where? I said, to meet your father and your son. Sherry, don't talk nonsense now, Crystal. 
then proceeding to hang up. Before I could turn around, I heard hollering in the distance. Onela came, crying. Then Auntie Gloria was there. Auntie Lloyd's, Auntie Lloyd's made those calls. All of us looked on in disbelief. Auntie Lloyd's finally gathered the strength and began calling the necessary authorities. By that time, Mami's last child, Preston, after he got the call, he went completely MIA. After Lois called him, because he wasn't expecting the news. And if you know anything about Mami's and Preston Bun, you can only imagine how he took it and still taking it. By this time, Esther and Kishon got filled in in the news. Esther is at work, Kishon is at home. Well, I don't have, well, I don't have eyes in way all the way in London, but from the reports I got, none of them could not help each other. News then traveled to Jotem, and you can well imagine as well how he took it. At midnight, a body left the home. The news traveled fast, so it was time to answer a million and one questions. <clears throat> and you know what? Just last week, I had an assignment, and I interviewed a man <clears throat> that recently turned 105 years. I said to myself, God, if my grandmother can make it to live to this, this long, I'll be happy. She was 12. She was 12. She was 12. Yeah, shy. But one thing is for certain. She lived a full 93 years. Two quotes mommy often used that I'll forever keep with me. And I'm sure her kids doesn't even remember these. But in our quiet times, while having our chats, when I was either bathing her or feeding her, she said, to leave lasting footprints on the sands of time, wear work shoes. Hence, all my shoes are always on point. She also said, people who have glass houses should not throw stones. But she receives a lot of stones. But she stood tall, quite humbled, and she used those stones to build this legacy that you are seeing here today. 93 years love. So if I had to put my life on hold again for mommy and papa, I'll do it again. So sleep in peace, mommy. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Despite all that Christian, Crystal mentioned, as an active senior, mommy dedicated her time and effort to the Pentecostal Light and Life Foundation from the time the school opened its doors in 2001. She served as chief cook and bottle washer in the canteen for over 10 years. Even in 2015, she was one of the seniors who graduated from the THA Senior Citizen Computer Literacy Program. As she told some of her grandchildren, she wanted to learn to do things for herself. Mommy peacefully departed this life on Friday, 13th February, 2020. Sorry. <laughs> on Friday, 13th October, 2023, at her home. And I must share that up, to, up until her passing, mommy relished any opportunity to praise and worship her God, to say God bless you to anyone who passes by, and to never allow anyone or any circumstance to affect her personal devotion time. Throughout all her life, she embodied the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. As I look at my siblings and our children, I see these fruits within all of us. Within myself, I see her goodness and her long-suffering. Beulah embodies her meekness. Lois reflects faith. Esther and Jotam 
carry her legacy of joy. Sherry personifies her peace. And Matthew, you indeed are blessed with her temperance and patience. These qualities have been passed down through generations and serve as a living tribute to, uh, to her enduring spirit. Our mother has left a Christian legacy for us to follow. Let us make her proud. Mommy was one of the torchbearers of Christ Jesus, whose main goal was to please him. Today, as we bid our farewell to Mommy, let us remember her as a woman of unwavering faith, bondless love, and, and a tireless servant of her family and the Lord Jesus Christ. Her legacy lives on in our hearts, and her memory will forever be cherished. Now, we release her into the loving arms of her faithful God. May her soul rest in peace. Thank you very much. I know, you all, I know you all were wondering how come I wasn't on the stage singing with my other siblings. I'm not thinking about the life. Won't be there to enjoy the view. I think heaven will be all right. Just as long as you're there, long as there is you. If there were the gates of hell, if we walk the streets of gold, if there were a lonely words, oh, in a land where we won't go. About the sights, no, won't be there to enjoy. Just as long as you're there, I am there with you. Everybody see, I'm not thinking about the sights. That is crystal for you. <laughs> we give God praise this evening. Listen, I, I am I'm so glad that you know we, we are we are celebrating. We are celebrating a life. We give God praise and thanks for his goodness and for his mercies towards us. You know uh, we, we have on the program a, a very special item from positive. And, um, you know, the, the thing about it is that I took the time because the, 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 the strength of the, the kind of sorrow <laughs> was kind of hitting everybody, you know? But thanks be unto God that we, he built the courage that he will, he, he's going to be here to sing for us this evening. So, Joel, welcome, welcome, welcome back. God bless you. Good afternoon. How are you all doing today? You all good? Isn't it a blessing to be in the house of the Lord with the people of the Lord? When I think about my and the character and the, you know, the personality and the legacy that they, the example that they set. How blessed are we to be in this time, boy? They don't make people like the Georges again. 
kind, loving. For me with Tante Charlo, it was something about the eyes. I will go down on that boxing day and she will pull me in a corner and say, I set aside this thing here for you. And she looking at you like you are the favorite child. But she have all kind of children and grandchildren already. So we are a music family. We like music. Whether we have voice, whether we have no voice, we go in and sing praises and just lift up and glorify the Lord. So we want to hear you singing some songs today. Is that okay? All right, I want you to give me a rhythm. It's called the answer rhythm. I want you to turn it up loud. You know, let's just sing lustily. Real simple songs that you should be able to know and sing along to. Amen. All right, you ready? Yeah, nah. Yeah, man. Pastor Prescott, listen. So everybody, we say, whoa, oh. I say, whoa, oh, oh. I oh. may say, whoa, oh, oh. I say, whoa, yo, oh, oh. Everybody say this in light of mine. Say it. Oh, 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 this in light of mine. Missing no one your name, this in light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. Remember this one right now, yeah. Hey, no one your name, oh, the blood. The blood that breaks every shade, oh. The blood. Missing no one your name every day, no the blood. I said it's one she's We have a start to keep here, yeah. I miss you what's your think about Jesus Christ. Missing no one your name, what you think about the most I got is Missing no one your name, what you think about the Yahweh God say? Oh, 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 what you think about the most I got is? Well, I said, don't try to tell me my God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Don't try to tell me he's not alive. I, hey, well, he opened up my blinded eyes and said, my, hey, cause all I want to. Tell me this, I said, Jesus' name, so. song for Tante Charlo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. He alone is mighty. Well, I know, I know, I know. Ah, who ah, oh, Lua is. Somebody say, so we serve a mighty God. Oh, no, 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 no. 
wants us to survive. All we need is one touch, one touch from the most I can say. Do you want a physician? Well, he will give you a prescription. She don't tell you the dosage might be. So my say, Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, we. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, we know that Sister George is gone, but we, we. This is not a crying time. This is a time to rejoice. And be glad in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we are thankful to the Lord this evening. You know, at, at the top of the program, but I believe we're going we're to do it after I finish my presentation. It must have been said, but um, I think Lois and I had a song to sing, Great is thy faithfulness. After I say my few words, we will sing that song in honor because that was one of the the, the song of Sister George. But but today, I, I want to talk to Sister George's two families. One, her immediate family. And two, her extended family, the People's Pentecostal Church. You know, the I, I remember while growing up, 13 of us in our family, my mother asked us one day, if she die, what are we going to do? And I was so afraid of death that when, when, when maybe there's a little tinge, maybe we remain somewhere, because when you hear a wake next door, and, and one time, two people died, two neighbors, one, one on the right, one on the left. And they were going to both going to be buried on the same day. So they had to wake the same night. And that was one, those, 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 um, those wakes used to be just singing and like they, would, they, they never had much thing, coffee and biscuit and, and little liquor. So when, when one song finished at one side, the other song on the next side, this time, my brother Reuben and I, we underneath the sheet sweating, sweating out of fear because we are afraid of death <laughs> so much. So when mommy asked us, what are we going to do? I say, I sure running away until everything finished because I can't face it at all. And she pulled me aside because I was the only one who answered. I, 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 I don't know the others. She just get carried away with me because I said, I'm going to run away. And she pulled me in a corner and she said, listen, let me tell you something right now. That any time I die, one of you all have to stand up. Stand up. So the thing about it is that she recognized that I was afraid, afraid of death. I had no understanding of the thing. But three deaths occurred in my life while pastoring here. And I don't think that anyone understood the strategicness of these deaths. And I'll explain to you 
the three deaths I'm referring to. I, I recall that um, one, one morning, but Anansi came through the curtain in the back there and she told me, um, Pastor Frank, you know, uh, I just received a call I say, uh, that, that um, Sister Ezra died. That was my secretary in the office. You know, Ezra was a handful to handle sometimes, but she was a good secretary. And, you know, she had an aneurysm while preparing to come to church on a morning when she began a, a thing to, we were gathering as a church to have a breakfast and she baked some bread this Saturday night. And, and we, we, I can't even remember how we ate those bread, whether in sorrow or in pain. So she, she went. The, the next thing was Frank Roberts. I mean, there are many people who might not have had good relationship with Roberts, but Roberts had a special gift. And Papa G loved him, you know. And he, he talked to me one day. He, 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 said, he said, let me say something in your ears, Pastor. Listen, you all don't know that man called Papa G, you know. He came to me and he said, listen. He said, you hear all those men ranting and coming down on Roberts in these meetings? He said, I want to tell you something. Roberts is more than, he alone is more than 10 of them. <laughs> he said, you know the reason I'm telling you that? This fellow have a special gift. You know, when, when we were building the school that Frank had an ability, we would talk something today. He could have written very good. You might not have stand him because you may say he provoking or what, but he could write cabinet notes. He knew exactly how to write those official papers. He sat with Brother Armstrong and make an executive summary of the product, you know, go down and all kind of graph and all kind of, some I didn't even understand. And if you go in our records, even to this day, there are some records there. When Frank came, aneurysm also, and he left. I said, my God, what happened? The third one was Turner Nelson. He became my mentor while I was building the school, encouraging me. I, I was bishop here at the time, and he used to tell me, well, stay back and make sure and you, you will come to the general executive for one day or two days, as the case might be. But apart from that, he used to say to me, Frank, we, we pray for us to have school. We pray for certain quantum leaps to take place in this organization. And he said, I see it in you. And he became like a cover, like a shelter. When he died, I, my parents died and I did not cry. But I sat down in my room there for hours. I got the call about 1 o'clock in the morning. And I cried, 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 cried. And like I couldn't take it, Matthew. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. They, they brought his body up and have a funeral here. And <laughs> I stood there, the tears coming out my eye, but I said I have to. I'm, I'm the leader. I have to. And I went through with it. So they called me and they said they have the last thing done in Trinidad. And they want me to come and think. I tell them, I say, I can't make it. Can't make it. I can't take it. I can't take it. Because when someone dies of importance in your life, it extracts from you like something is taken away. But in the depth of my sorrow and praying, you know, they say, well, Pastor, well, Miles Monroe, turn up. That one, turn up. You're not coming. I said, no, nah, I'm coming. I can't make it. And then God intervened because I was broken and down. And, and I heard the scripture because I knew it from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. And it says, 
in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And, 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 and the Bible said above it, the, the seraphims, each one six wings, with twain covering their face, with twain covering their legs. And with twain, they, they flew, the Bible says. And as they fly, the Bible says that, and one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the whole earth is filled with his glory. But that part was not the part that God ministered unto me. I, I, I read and I said, I, I know of the, the presence and the power of God that he is holy. But I saw myself, how am I going to function without the support of this man? Because what was happening is that there are certain people that are in our lives that becomes a tremendous prop and covering while they minister and shape our lives in a particular direction. But there come a time when God will take those people away from you. Now, what I want my family, both immediate and extended family, the People's Church, to understand that today we are standing here eulogizing, singing, and, and reminiscing upon a woman who I believe can be ranked the greatest woman who would have passed through this organization, giving us principles and guidance of how we should operate. Indeed, there was a void. While we were studying at Bible school, there was this contention, theological argument, what the contention was. The year King Uzziah died, uh, was it marking the 11th or the 12th of October? Or was there something else about Uzziah that we should notice except the time of his death? And because at that time, sometimes Bible school students do not you're talking big, but you have no depth at all. You understand? When I say you have no depth at all, it takes years to really grasp certain truths in the scripture. There are something God may bust out a revelation on you on certain times and so on as he help you as you grow. But as you get down into the word of God, your understanding is enlightened and God begins to download some things into your spirit and to your understanding. And it doesn't happen overnight. However, I'm not saying that to say that you would not reach where God wants you to reach. But I want you to get the point that I'm making. Because what was happening here, as, as the scripture says, that when he died, I set out recently, let me look and to see what was so great about Josiah, apart from the, the, the date of his death. And I was shocked to realize that Josiah was a remarkable man. He was a man, he was, as a matter of fact, he was an extraordinary man. I note a couple of things concerning him, and, and probably ten of them. One, the Bible said that he did that which was right in the sight of God. But what was happening this Uzziah began to reign as king 16 years old. Now, Galatians chapter 4 tells us an heir that, 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 that is a child is no greater than a servant because he's under tutelage. Now, that is speaking to the fact that he is not yet appointed king. If you really check it carefully. But what was happening here, they appointed him anyway. 
But the strategic thing that was said about that passage in Chronicles is that they call his mother's name. And they recognize that his mother played an essential role as the first 10 verse in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 31, which speaks to Lemuel, where his mother gave him counsel of how he should function as king. So it gives us an indication that many times the wives of the king, they had some information that she was guiding her son to function in a particular way. And I do believe that while fathers are important, mothers are important in guiding their son in their behavior and what they do, what they function, even though sometimes they spoil them. Anyway, but that is not intended to shoot any bullets. But, but what I'm saying is that he was 16 years old. The second thing the Bible said he did what was right in the sight of God. The third thing the Bible said he sought the Lord. He did not only did it, but he sought the Lord in the time of Zechariah seeking understanding in visions. The other thing about him, the Bible said that he fought against the Philistines. But what was important about it, his, he had a very strong and special army. And the Bible said that he broke down the walls in Ashdod and in the midst of the Philistine. And he went there after he would have broken down the walls, defeated them. He built cities in their territory. So he was such a skillful warrior that he also now contributed to the economy at that time. Apart from that, the Bible said he dug wells. He loved husbandry, he not an agriculturist, that he, he was able to do a number of things. He had vineyards, he had cattle in, in a great abundance. So he was a fellow who also knew how to set up business and economic thing for that time and that day. He was a man who had insights in a lot of things. As a matter of fact, the only place in the Bible I found the word engine appear is that the Bible says some cunning men under Uzziah develop an engine. He built a lot of towers and they used to set this engine up there to shoot rocket, shoot stone, shoot spears. So how that mechanism was, the Bible records the first engine during the time of Uzziah. What am I trying to say quickly? Is that this man was so exceptional in his time. That when he died a void was created. Sister George is gone. And indeed there is a void. A void created. While the eulogy was being given I, I asked uh, Stacy, should I come to you for Christmas for the, the, the sorrel and ginger beer? She said, me. <laughs> the, the point I'm making is that the, 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 maybe we had to check out Sherry or Gloria, but, but, but I, I don't know if Lois, you know, you know what, what this cooking skill is, but the, 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 point, the point is that the, the <laughs> The, the thing about, the point I'm making is that indeed when a person like Sister George would go on to be with God, there will definitely be some void. But what we have to think about now, the void is created. We learn about who, who it is God was talking about. We, 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 we talk about Uzziah when he died. And the void that it created. But who was now left behind? Who were the people who were left behind to respond? So, immediately, immediately, as I was saying that when I was so dumb and the Lord began to talk to me, the Lord was saying to me, brother, now is your turn to rise up. Nelson is gone. You now have to rise up. Georgie is gone. We now have to rise up. But when, when God began to deal with him, they hear what the Bible says. He said, woe is me. Woe is me because I'm undone. 
he began to see his faults and limitations. To begin to make an excuse to God as to why he will not step up and take the challenge. There are some stepping ups that need to take place after today. You may think that you are doing already some things for God, but I believe that today is a defining moment if both us in the extended family and the immediate family should realize that after we have seen the template that have been given by this great woman, it means that we must arise, take up our bed and walk. The thing that cradled all of us, you remember that was a miraculous thing in that miracle? The bed, the man was taken to the pool with the bed and then Jesus miraculously the man did not even realize that he could have gotten up. So Jesus said, get up. As he got up, he said, now take up your bed. That which carry you, you must now carry it. I am not speaking to Sister George. She have done, she really fought a good fight. She finished the course and she kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for her a crown of righteousness that the righteous judge shall give unto her on the day of his appearing. Today, we celebrate a life, but today is equally about you and I. What are we going to do with the legacy of this great woman? Now, the first response of Isaiah. Now, you look at Isaiah, you read the amount of chapter, the prophet that he became. And, and he had the prestigious role to be the messianic prophet. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The role that the prophecies of Isaiah played in history of God. It is such that the Bible tells us here, the first response of Isaiah was, woe is me. What he was saying that I don't have the capacity to do as much as Josiah did. I don't have the capacity to do as much as George did. I do believe that Jesus, the great work he did on earth, you know what he said to his disciples? Greater works you shall do than these. That in every one of you, Matthew, Lois, grandchildren, there, there are some giftings that God deposited that is still locked up, crying out for release. And you may say, well, Pastor Frank, you don't know how much mischief I make. You don't know how much things that I have done. You don't know what I have said and how I behave. Why is me? So what, what, what happened after that? The, the, the Bible says he, he began to go down that road. However, he saw himself and he said, I am undone. So he was crying out passionately in despair of as he looked at his own state. He also said, I'm undone. I'm in proper, I'm not in a proper place. I, I cannot be used like this. And then the last thing he said, God, I'm a man of unclean lips because I dwell among a people of unclean lips. But God was not moved with his excuse. 
the excuse is that he made God was not impressed. What excuse are both families making today? You cannot no longer hide behind the accomplishment of Sister George. You have to now present your own accomplishment for Almighty God. You, got, you have to now do your thing. You've got to now get up and say, what is my call? What is my part in this equation? Let me now get myself in order. You, you remember? If, I'm sure that if you, if, if, if Crystal will cook something for you right now, it's it, it tasting better than those burnt offering that she did earlier. Huh? You see what was happening? She grew up with one of the best chefs you know, she might not have gone on bang bang, but she did her bangs right here among us. You remember Matthew when 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 they did not find communion bread, who brought it? Huh? She brought it. When she recognized that the children in junior church were behaving antsy and wasn't paying attention, she makes sweet bread. And she walked with refreshment. And they think it's only for that she knew they were hungry. She knew she created an expectation. Because many of them who only came for the bread and fish, there were those who only came there because of what she could provide. But not only that, she got them in the right place. And she could say, yes, I have the juice, I have the sweet bread there, but wait a little while. You're going to get it just now, my friend. Darling, you're going to get it just now. And she now gave you the word. She gave you the word. And I, I remember speaking to a, <laughs> a young lady who grew up right there in church. And she said when she heard Sister George, and Sister George's name called, she said, oh, Lord, them sweet bread in the junior church. So that she remember. I hope she would have said that she remember the memory verse. <laughs> However, the, the Bible tells us, brethren, that he said, I am an unclean man. But let me read verse 7 and 8 in this passage for you. Hear, hear what the Bible tells us. The Bible said, then, then flew one of the seraphims unto me. Having a live coal in his hands, which he had taken with a tongue from off the altar. So he took a live coal from off the altar. And he said, the Bible said, and he laid it where? Upon my tongue. So what God was saying, listen, I am the cleanser. I am the one who, can, who will make you ready. So what are you worrying about? The blood of Jesus still cleans from all sins. There's no sin that we could commit that the blood of Jesus can cleanse. There is no wrong that we can do that God cannot forgive. There's only one scripture I found where the Bible said that God does not forgive. is when we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. But when we're talking about the cleansing for sin, God did his best. What am I saying is that even it was an Old Testament passage, God was showing that he has the ability to cleanse. He has the ability to forgive. He has the ability to make us ready to function for his honor and for his glory. And if we only come here and only studying to cry, Listen, this is not a crying time alone. This is a recalibration. This is a refocusing. This is how we are going to say, how now, now granny is gone. Now mommy is gone. Now Georgie is gone. How can we now align ourselves to fulfill purpose, our purpose in this life? M many, many, listen, she did what she did. And you know the reason why that she never got fed up? She, she taught one important lesson, you know. Even though you retire, stay active. 
And there are many people who are retiring. And my, my sister who worked with her, she was babysitter for some of them since I uh, winner. She used to come and said, listen, two spin on a boat and you're no longer there. But it is important for us to recognize that what was taking place, God was able to prepare. And, and I want you to see the ability of God. Because after Isaiah made the complaint, after Isaiah said, woe is me, after Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips, after he said all that he said, it was God who sent the seraphim to cleanse his tongue. And after God said, well, listen, the, the, the problem is solved. You're no longer a man of unclean lips. After the fire of God touched his tongue, he was no longer the man he was a moment before. And what we can see here is the changing power of God. That God, listen, there, there, there were a lot of good in Isaiah, you know, because after God cleansed him, Isaiah was already prepared. Isaiah already had the information. Isaiah already had the ability. All he need was repo repurposing. Repurposing. I'm sure, as night followed day, that, that, that you are now remembering some things about Georgie that you never thought that you had in your mind. The seed have been deposited. It is just the behavior that need to be brought in line. What we do with that information that she deposited to us. How do we function hereafter as we're going forward? So the Bible says that after the Lord realized that I've took care of Isaiah's problem, you hear what the Lord said. Who is going to go for me? God never told Isaiah he wanted him to go anywhere. God asks, who will go for us? And that is the, the, the thing. Who will go for us? And then, Isaiah said, here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Listen, the years of interacting, and we can regurgitate and re remember the principles. Now the question is, who will go for me? Who will continue? Who, who will really recognize that it was God that was working out his purpose in Sister George's life, that we will see how God's purpose is worked out. And while she worked the purpose, she taught us, she tell us this, she, she, she would impart certain things. Now what are we going to do with that information? What are we going to do with it? And I'm saying that I, I began utilizing plenty from her and Brother George, their advice, their guidance, the way how they respond to people, the way how they love people, the way how when, when it's time to be stern, they were stern, but when time to love, they love. And, and, and I say to you today that the church would be bankrupt if they are not people who will emulate these principles. You know, there are so many people talking about the young people going astray. There are so many people talking, church, me now go back there. When Georgie and they were here, Matthew, you want to come. Why, why, why you want to come? Because of the way how they behave. Sometimes you hear young Brother Charles get away. And he gets up and he tells Brother Charles, you sick! Somebody tell you that you are forgiving them at all. But by tomorrow, the both of them telling you, I just called to say I love you. The two men, the man bam, tall and short. And they will fire on each other. I sat before them already. And I said, it's two men crazy. But 
Afterward, it never interferes with their will. You know how many people don't, don't learn how to be angry and sin not? Not to get vexed and just jump ship and drowned? Some kind of whale have to swallow you to bring you to safety? It is important for us. Who, who will, who will go for us? Now in the end, I want to tell you that God removed some people from our lives that <laughs> he can get to you and I. Can get to you. Has he gotten to you? What are we going to do? This is what the Lord brought to me when I said, Father, what am I going to say? And he reminded me how these deaths affected me. You know, you, I never shared it publicly, but sometimes it affects you. And, and you carry the burden of certain things. But then thereafter, the Lord was showing me that I was allowing these things to happen because I want to bring you in a special place. And I want you not to miss that today. And these are my words to the family and the extended family. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I want you to see God. I want you to see him. And, and, and there it is that it was important too. That they don't say that, that, that I, Isaiah saw himself. And for, for you to make that critical step as I close, you have to see yourself. You have to ask yourself some questions quickly. Am I in the place where God wants me to be? But I also want to let you know that after you see yourself, knowing that God has the power to bring about a difference, a change, and an and, and, and alignment, I, I think it's more that. Because lots of the information have been deposited into your spirit already. We want to say us a prayer. I, I know that many times we look for those who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But I, I want to make us a prayer today as I would transcend into praying for the family. You know, if you are here in this service, the prayer I want to make because of this great lady and the example that she would have said. If, if you are here and you tell yourself that I, I have not fulfilled my part yet for God. And, and you know that there are some things that you must do for the Lord, but you're not doing it now. I want you to stand where you are, Christian, non-Christian, whatever, but I want you to stand where you are. We want to say a, a very special prayer for you, that God will start you where you are and bring about a difference. Do we have any such here, both in, in, our, in the George's family, that you have not yet fulfilled? Your purpose for God, this is the call I want to make today. So before I pray for the family, can we find anyone who can say that I have not yet fulfilled my plan for God? And I want you to pray for me, Pastor. Could you just stand up where you are? Stand where you are. Don't be reluctant. Don't be reluctant. You know, stand up where you are. For those who are standing, I want to pray for you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. You have never brought us into this world without purpose. But there is a purpose and a plan. And the way that Sister George and even Brother George's live as founders, of this 
Power Movement here in Tobago, this church organization. They would have left behind a template which as we celebrate the life of Sister George who you have taken back to be with you. We are asking you today concerning us who are now here for, for the work that we must accomplish. And I pray today for all those that are standing that purpose will be fulfilled in their lives. That that which you have caused them to come into this world for, that it will be initiated today. Father, we ask this in no other name but in Jesus' name. And Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Father, we now lift up before you the family, the immediate family of Sister George. I lift up her sons and daughters. I lift up before you her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. And if there be any great, great, we lift them up before you. And we surrender this entire family into your hands. And we pray that your comfort and your blessing, Father, my, my spirit just flash upon Joel, the second Joel, not positive. I, I, I know her love for joy. And I pray God in the name of Jesus. I pray for her in a special way. Not really wanting to single out. But I know her love. For joy. I pray that purpose shall not be denied. That she shall fulfill. Purpose in life. And for all her grandchildren. That, that those purpose. That, that it shall be fulfilled. We Onella and. And all the, the others whose name I can't all remember. I pray God, I, 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 Isaiah who is gone, has, he, his sister. We, we pray for all of them. And we ask, oh God, that that which have been sown into their hearts and into their spirits will come. will germinate and grow into fulfillment. So we pray that you're going to bless them. We pray that you're going to continue to keep them. We pray that your continued blessing will be upon them. And Lord, what about Kian? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for him in a very special way. Mighty God, Mighty God, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him in the name of Jesus. Bless the family. May your face shine upon them and be gracious unto them. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. Give them continued blessing on all the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. Shahida, Stacy, Father Crystal, and, and those whose name I can't remember, Lord God, I call them before you because you know them by name and by nature. We pronounce your blessing upon them. Pronounce your blessing. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I know that we have stretched on before time, but Lois, come and let us do what we I promise to do before God as we sing this song Great is Thy Faithfulness Oh God, I think there's a, there's a mic right here, I have one they just turn this okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. okay, I'll sing the first verse, you sing the second one we sing the chorus together that's the name Hallelujah, even though our pitch may be different, we gotta join it together Oh great is Thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow 
of turning with thee. Thou changest not thine compassion. They fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Let's sing it now. Great is thy just like for everybody to stand and let us give our grandmother my grandmother a round of applause for 93 years loved thank 
you all so much. Um, we have Delis. Yeah. She's coming. Yeah. So we want her to sing while the viewing is taking place. So let us do this. Bless the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea.
it strong. With a smile on your face. <laughs> eh? Look at you, you had enough bed dribbling in on your side, bro. I look at you. Eh? The more we hey. are together. Hey. Together. Hey. The more we are together. Hey. The happier we can be. Your friend is my hey, friend, my, my friend, friend is your friend. Hey, the more we are together, the happier we shall be. Hey, hey. <laughs> let me pray now. He came crashing down. He defeated more Philistines in his death than he did his whole life. What we've been waiting for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. What the Lord has done. Oh, what we've been praying for has come to pass. From every fear, those who look on him are radiant, they'll never be ashamed, they'll never be ashamed, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from
Maria. 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 I don't do apple. I take crystal bar, get to take all the lemon. With a smile on your face. <laughs> eh? Look at you, you had enough bed dribbling on yourself. Oh. Eh? Look at you. Eh? The more we hey. are together. Hey, hey. Together. Hey. Together. Hey. The more we are together. 
together. Hey, 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 He came crashing down. He defeated more Philistines in his death than he did his whole life. Like saying, Oh, see what the Lord has done. What did he Mommy, so, 
Okay. I don't have to. I take a start by. Yeah. With a smile on your face. <laughs> eh? Look at you, you're in a bed dribbling on yourself. I oh. eh? look at you. Eh? The more we hey. are together. Hey. Hey. Together. Hey. Together. Hey. The more we are together. Hey. The happier we are being. Oh, your friend is my hey. friend. The more we are together, the happier we shall be. Hey! Hey! Let me pray now. It came crashing down. He defeated more Philistines in his death than he did his whole life. Like saying, Oh, see what the Lord has done. What we've been waiting for. Has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Oh, what we praying for. Come to pass. And deliver me, never be ashamed, don't never be ashamed.
Nunca no hay mala fe, ¿sabes qué tiene fe? Mami, esto, hasta...
Are you waiting on anyone? We shall be all changed in a moment in the at the truck at the last trump. Oh. But thanks be unto God, which give unto us the victory to our Lord. Therefore, we who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will go out and of the Holy Spirit, we commit our body in Jesus' name. Amen.